and see if I can get the microphone right. Does anyone have the microphone there? Look at somebody next to you and say, you look better than normal. Lift your right hand high and say these words, precious Holy Spirit, you are my master mentor. You are my trusted teacher. I love your voice. When you talk to me, my mind is healed. When you correct me, I excel. I've come into your presence as a receiver. I receive your wisdom. I receive your words. I receive your correction. I receive your instruction. I receive your assignment for my life. If you have called me to bring the world into order, you've called me to government, I embrace that assignment. Let the anointing of Daniel come upon me. Give me the ability to discern deceivers and wolves in my government. If you have called me to the world of business, prosper the work of my hands. Let the anointing of Abraham come upon me. If you have called me into the ministry of the gospel, I embrace that assignment. And I say a forever yes to you. In Jesus name. Wherever there's pain in your body, lay your hand there. If there's pain in your stomach, lay your hand there. If there's pain in your neck, lay your hand there. If you need God to touch your hearing, lay your hand on your ear. If your eyes need the healing power of Jesus, put your hand on your eyes. If you have problems walking, put your hand on your knees. The Bible says where two agree as touching anything, it is done. Pray this prayer aloud with me because faith is voice activated. You can't think your way to faith. You have to speak it. The mouth is the carrier of faith. Pray this prayer with me in the name of Jesus. I take authority over all sickness and disease in my body. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, by whose stripes I am healed. Pain go from my body. Sickness go from my body. Disease go from my body. I am healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I receive the healing power of Jesus. Eyes be healed, ears be healed, migraine headaches stop, cancer go from your body, tumor go from your body. Knees be healed, stomach be healed, colon be healed, heart be healed, blood be healed, back be healed, neck be healed. Arthritis go, arthritis go. In the name of Jesus we receive the healing power of Jesus. Pain you cannot stay, disease you cannot stay. We are receivers of the divine healing of Jesus of Nazareth now. I receive. Say it aloud, I receive. Oh, hallelujah. Say it loud, I receive. Praise God. I had a lady tell me one time, by the way, go ahead and see if your pain has gone, if it's left. If you walked in here with pain today, and that pain 
has gone, stand quickly to your feet. If you walked in here with pain today and that pain has gone, check it out, check it out. Stand quickly. If you walked in here with pain and that pain has left your body, stand to your feet all across the room. Praise God. Just stand where you are. There's a lady over here. Anyone else I can't see as well? There's a brother here. Give God a hand clap. You don't have to, you don't have to wait till the end of the service. Anyone else? Quickly, quickly, just stand for a moment. Amen. Here's a lady over here. Sometimes a yeah, lady over here. Praise God. Just say I'm a receiver. We don't want to wait till the end of the service. He's a healing Jesus. A lady came to me and I said, uh, do you believe God's going to heal you? She said, well, I believe he's trying to teach me something. I said, you don't believe God's going to heal you? She says, well, she says, I think he's trying to teach me something. I said, are you taking medicine? She said, oh, yes. I said, shame on you for taking medicine when God's trying to teach you through sickness and disease. How many believe the Holy Spirit's a good teacher? He's a good teacher. God does not use sickness and disease to teach us. And that's very important. I love sitting at your feet. This is my love song to the Holy Spirit. I love hearing every word you say. I love knowing your desires. I love knowing your desires. Sing it with me. I'm so pleasure to obey. I'm so pleasure to obey. Yes. Your favor is like sunrise. Sing it from your heart. Your favor is like sunrise. Driving. Driving all my nights away. All my nights away. I love sitting. I love sitting. At your feet every single day. Ah, yes, one last time with passion. I love sitting at your feet every single day. God never responds to tears, never has, never will. God's never respond to pain. God's never responded to poverty, never has. God only responds to faith. You can live a lifetime and never know the ways of God on the earth. You only know what you've been taught by someone you trusted. It took me years to grasp, God, there's a problem, solve it. But according to the Bible, God only reacts to faith. I have a passion to understand the ways of God. I want to get along with God. I want God to like me. I'm not impressed by his love. That sounds crazy, but pastor, when I found out he loved everybody, I didn't feel so special. It's like your wife being in love with all the men of the earth. You wouldn't like that, would you? So when I found out that the Holy Spirit, that Jesus loved everybody, he loved Saddam Hussein, he loved Adolf Hitler. I said, shoot, I don't feel so special. So I really wanted to get into God's like zone. Since he loves everybody, I want God to enjoy me. I want God to be interested in me. Not as a human, but as an individual. I really want to understand God. And he said, without faith, it's impossible to pleasure God. I discovered one thing about God that's really changed my life. He only has one need. He has a need to be trusted. He has a need to be believed. That's why every time you want a miracle, he gives you an instruction. Because when you complete the instruction, you've documented your faith. He looks at the blind man. Here's a man that's blind, never seen. 
And what does he say? Walk two miles to the pool of Siloam, spit, spit, mud, mud, stuck, sticks it on his eyes and said, now go wash it off. Not until the man washed the clay and spittle off did his eyes see. God's very calibrated. God's very meticulous. Very calibrated. He's precise. I see this in our pastor Paul. I reached over and told his wife, I have never met a human as meticulous as precision to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You can look around. How many wish you could create a marvelous work for the Lord at this level of excellence? Five, okay. Six, praise God. You're waking up. But I've never seen that. But God, that's, that's how God operates. God's not sloppy. He's not messy. He's very precise. Very precise. And you'll notice the closer you get to God, the more orderly your life will become. Order is the accurate arrangement of things. It has five benefits. The first is comfort. The second is productivity. The third is prosperity. Order is the seed for multiplication. If you don't know anything else this week, try to grasp this. God only wants me to believe Him. Every problem in your life can be traced to doubt. Every problem. Doubt is the seed for chaos. It stops momentum. Doubt is so ferocious to God that He allowed the Israelites to enter 40 years from 40 days of doubt. Doubt produces loss like faith produces miracles. The most important person in your life is the one who works with your faith in the Word of God. That's the most important person in your life. You can't change your life through hope. You can't change your life because you hurt. It is faith in the Word of God. The most important scripture in your Bible is Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie nor the Son of Man that he, he spoke it, he will perform it. God has an obsession to be believed. And we work with our faith. Oh, I'm going to try. Well, faith is the fruit of his words in us. Faith comes. That's why faith can leave. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the Word of God. His words are like time release capsules. Have you ever taken medicine or vitamins and they said it'll show up in the next day or two? One vitamin, they said it'll show up in about two weeks. But there's a time release. That's like His Word. His Word is so important. Obsessions ago in Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, and um, the men picked me up that morning. They had already started the conference. I said, well, how did it go last night? He said, oh, both of the chauffeurs said, glorious. They went on and on how great the conference was. And uh, life-changing, life-changing, life-changing. I said, so what did you do differently today from yesterday? They looked at me and said, uh, huh? I said, what did you do different today? You said last night's conference was glorious. You said you were changed. So what did you do differently today? One of them looked at each other and they said, pretty good question, isn't it? What will you do differently tomorrow? I'm going to share with you a little bit about the Holy Spirit. The first seven minutes with God every day. I call it seven minutes with God. 
You'll never be the same. God's going to talk to you. God's going to give you uh, plans. He's going to say words to you. God will discuss anybody with you. He will reveal people's hearts. He will give you the greatest ideas you've ever had. And you can document them. And beginning today, we're going to have seven minutes with God every morning. Now, some of us are already at an hour. We're at two hours. But I don't want you to make promises you can't keep. Start with a seed. Everything starts with a seed. Look at someone right next to you and say, I see prosperity all over your face. Praise God. Thank you, fellows. Thank you. Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. And I'll tell you, I have just been in heaven the last hour and a half. It just, you don't want to leave, do you? Choir, you were fabulous. Demons are grabbing their heads. They got migraines from your singing and musicians. And of course, Donnie has been a icon in in the, the United States for about 75 years. <laughs> ah, he, oh, there's there's no there's there's only one Donnie, and we love him all over the world. He is. Give him a big hand clap. This is a marvelous gift. So nice that I told the host, tell Pastor God speaking to me about being here a year. <laughs> I've written 400 books. Some of them have gone around the world. Some have been, you know, people, some of the preachers of the world bought them by the thousands. And I wrote 400. I put over 100 in a little ebook reader that you can read anytime. So instead of bringing a bunch of books, it's my ebook reader it has over 100 Mike Murdoch books in there. The Law of Recognition is there. The book that Benny Hinn asked me to write for his partners, 31 Reasons People Do Not Receive a Financial Harvest. The book, The Richest Man, The Secrets of the Richest Man in the World. I spent, uh, uh, 19 years writing that book and it's on the secrets of Solomon by the way one of the 31 secrets of Solomon is he never hired anybody unhappy <laughs> isn't that a secret isn't that a secret and then I put I have um, I got pocket protégés I've got 12 I bought two for you one is on the Holy Spirit over 100 hours of my teaching all over the world, all the conferences on the Holy Spirit and a lot of my songs. Now it's me singing, so it's not, it's, it's, it's not like this. <laughs> this is endure. You have to endure my singing. Oh, the Holy Spirit loves these songs. He loves this song. The song I just sung, I love sitting at your feet. Don't get jealous. <laughs> this is for you over 100 hours of teaching on the Holy Spirit who he is, what he does, etc how he affected my life at two and a half years old I was eaten up with worms over, over 600 worms crawled out of my body out of my mouth in one day and God healed me miraculously through one sentence my father spoke it's on there then I've got uh, the pocket protege on millionaire 300 now, I know you're already plenty wealthy, but this teaches how to get super blessed. I believe every, yeah, how many know you couldn't stay poor hanging around this man? You couldn't stay poor. No. I tell you, if I was, I sit there when he talks, just every word. I, I think he could, he's anointed to announce things. When he announces things, I sit there and say, I got to remember that. I got to remember that. We love you, Pastor. All over the world, people speak of you, as you know. And what you've accomplished for God amazes us. This, God's blessed me to be very touched with that anointing for wealth and for the blessing of the Lord. And uh, I talk on here, the seven investment rules of Warren Buffett, etc., and I know you're not a Donald Trump fan, but I've got some of his secrets in there. Oh, he's a master negotiator. All of those things are here, and it's called Millionaire 300. Blessings on you, and I appreciate you with all my heart.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Each of those pocket protégés, I meet some good, have over a hundred hours of teaching. Had an interesting thing happen. I was in uh, Brazil and they put a man on the phone who was the cousin of the president and a close friend of President George Bush. And he said, I have your teaching on seven things that money cannot buy. And he said, it's changed my life. I've listened to it over a hundred times. He was sending his helicopter for me to uh, meet his family. And he said, and he is one of the top, there's uh, the hundred wealthiest men in the world meet once a year in a city. He's one of the hundred. And he said, I've never had anything to affect my life. He said, it stays in my car. That's the only CD that I listen to. Seven things money cannot buy. It's very powerful. So some of these items are at a table somewhere here. Don't ask me where, but they are. And uh, if you'd like any of our books, our tapes, our th items, they're back there. I want to talk to you about the three most important things in the world. The Holy Spirit, your assignment, and your seed. What is wisdom? The ability to recognize difference. Difference in people. Difference in a moment. Difference in value. Last time I was here in uh, Nigeria, I brought some little children up and I gave them all a choice between a thousand naira bill and a hundred dollar bill in American money. And every one of them chose the thousand dollars. And I was using an expression, you know, nothing is ever as it first appears. And I asked their parents to come up and their parents come up and stood behind them and they went back to the hundred dollar bill. Now how many know there's a difference between a thousand naira and a hundred dollar bill in US money? Okay. Some of you don't know the difference. Let me explain. Correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor. Isn't a thousand naira about seven dollars? About seven dollars. What's a hundred dollar bill? A hundred and sixty? Huh? A hundred dollar bill is seventeen thousand naira? I love the number system here. I want to. I, I, I want to. I want a naira system. You feel. You feel blessed. Wow. Wow. So when I've got a hundred dollar bill, I have seventeen thousand naira. It was real rough, and I said, that. How much longer are you going to be so stupid? I said, some of you have grandkids that can't wait for you to die so they can get your stuff. Don't you want the power of God in your life? Don't you want the presence of God in your life? So age doesn't create. Now, wisdom is different than information. Wisdom is on discerning, recognition of wrong people, recognition of right people. That's what wisdom is about. Who's it? Why should I follow? Who should I be listening to? Who, who stirs up my weakness? Who protects me? Now, there's three areas I want to discuss with you about your wisdom. Number one, the Holy Spirit, the only person you're required to obey 
He walks on your right side. He's not only inside you as a power, but he's a person. He is to us what Jesus was to the twelve. What Peter could not become in three and a half years next to Jesus, he became in a single day when the Holy Spirit entered him. The Holy Spirit is not wind, though his word, the word spirit, means wind. He talks, he speaks. In Acts 8, he links you to the person to whom you are assigned. In Jeremiah chapter 1, the Holy Spirit is the one who chooses the gifts and skills that are within you. Exodus 34, he is the one that decides all your gifting, your talents, your skills. In Acts 13, the Holy Spirit is the one who links you geographically where you belong. Because you will not prosper everywhere. You will prosper somewhere. Your assignment's not to everybody. Your assignment is to a person or a group of people. You don't belong to everybody. That assignment is very precise and specific. And in Acts 13, the Holy Spirit is the one that told them which territory they would excel. There are seven incredible rewards for talking to the Holy Spirit. He will expose a liar to you. He will identify a mentor he's chosen to teach you. He will tell you right decisions. Remember that decisions decide your success. And not God's decision, your decisions. Joshua 1, 7 and 8 didn't say God would make you successful. He said you would make your way successful. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference, difference in value, your difference from someone else. He's the person who talks to you about your assignment. The first seven minutes, I call seven minutes with God. Say that with me. Seven minutes with God. Say it again. Oh, say it with passion. You come into his presence every morning. You hear his voice first. December the 31st, 1999, Honolulu, Hawaii. I made a decision not to talk to any human before I talked to the Holy Spirit. He is the only person capable of being contented with you. He's the easiest relationship in my life. He is the only friend I have who requires no explanation of what I do. How many would just like to have one friend who could interpret you and your conduct correctly? Well, he's the one. There's no one like him. He loves conversation. He loves conversation. On July the 13th, 1994, I began to meet with him every morning. And I started for four hours a day. I started at 8 to 12. Later, I went to 9 to 1. But I met with the Holy Spirit every morning. This is where he taught me little things like, I told you the other night a little of my testimony, decisions decide wealth. And in four months, I had more money than I'd ever thought in my life I'd ever have. Buying one jet, then a second jet, then a third jet. Bought them all cash and never took a single offering for them. Because he told me three words. Decisions decide wealth. Decisions decide wealth. I wrote them down. He will discuss your business with you. And you enter his presence singing. That's the protocol for entering divine presence. Is to, uh, excuse me, is to enter singing. I can't say this enough. That if you hear his voice, he'll talk to you. You mentioned about 14 years. That's rich. That God starts giving us instructions for the future. God thinks way ahead. And he talks to you. Something he's telling you today is linked to tomorrow. Obedience is what you do without understanding. Obedience.
Obedience is what you do without understanding. Agreement is what you do when you have understanding. Pastor, you may say, this is what we want to do, uh, and this is what, I, Brother Mike, I need for you to help me on this thing and help me over here. Now I have understanding that's agreement. But if you tell me to do something that I don't understand, that's obedience. It's two levels of greatness. Agreement with God is very different than obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Seven minutes with God, you go into His presence and you begin to sing. I love you, I love you, Holy Spirit. Now the command is to sing a new song. So don't worry about singing old songs. Just sing a new song. Just start singing. There is nobody like you. I need you, Holy Spirit. I need you. And don't worry if you go to sleep. God's not insulted by that. I looked over at my father one day. He and I have prayed for many, many years. He's the best man of prayer I've ever known in my life. And I was raised. That's all I was raised with. Memorizing a scripture every day and, and, and uh, praying every morning and every night. We always had family prayer, seven children, every morning and every night. That's all I knew. And I looked over one day, because Daddy and I prayed for years and years every morning, four hours. And uh, he's 97, still alive, and kicking, as people would say. <laughs> Full of the Holy Ghost. And doesn't hesitate to disagree if he disagrees. But I looked over there, and dear Daddy was sleeping. And I thought, my Lord, here's a man of God sleeping in God's presence. <laughs> and so I just tried to stay, you know, active so God wouldn't notice him. <laughs> and I was praying and talking to the Lord. And just, you really want to get conversational with God. Get out of the preacher mode of, hallelujah, praise God, we love you. God, thank you, Lord, heal everybody, heal everybody, do everything. Ever. You're not an auctioneer. <laughs> you want to get real comfortable discussing how you feel with God. Now, I will say this. I learned through Oral Roberts how to interpret tongues back in English so that I would be able to write down what God was going to do. That's a whole nother level. Because God wants you to interpret back at the tongues that you share with him. And you can begin to journal that. It's amazing what God will do. Amazing. Now, I begin to pray. Lord, I love you. Lord, thank you. Lord, hope. And my, and my daddy, will, he leaned over and, thank you, Jesus. And he kept, he kept sleeping. And so I talked to the Holy Spirit. I said, how do you feel about that? Because my whole life, can you not watch with me one hour? How dare you sleep in God's presence? And it's like the Holy Spirit says, it's the safest place to sleep. <laughs> he wasn't at all insulted. So you relax with God. He's, he's met a lot of people worse than you. Relax with Him. Sing to Him. Love Him. And then... Ask him questions. A question is the seed for a new season. The most important thing I do every day is ask questions. I want to be remembered for that because I want one sentence on my gravestone. Ask questions relentlessly. The quickest changes in your life will come through questions. If I was dying tonight, who would I want to pray for me? Who are the five people that shown me the most honor? Who are my top ten investors and how have I proven worthy of their investment? If I had one year left to live, who would I train? Who would I teach? If I had forty dollars left to my name, how would I multiply? If you just begin to ask yourself questions, there's a heaven inside of you. I feel like a question brings you to God. 
Now, I pray every day. I fast. I do many things. But the most fruitful thing I do is ask questions. I ask them aloud. I write the question. I write the question. Your success will happen at the speed of your questions. Your success will happen at the speed of your questions. Peter J. Daniels called me one day, a billionaire friend from Australia, and he said, Mike, what's really stopping you? And I stopped. I was on the phone. I would going through a lot of attacks. He said, what's stopping you? And I didn't know what to say. He said, nothing, is it? Nothing is really stopping you. If you will get into the rhythm of questions, and when you come in the Holy Spirit's presence, and I say seven minutes because that's something you can do routinely, and it's the routines that create greatness. Men who succeed do something daily that others do occasionally. Habit is a gift from God. It means anything you do twice becomes easier. They asked Muhammad Ali, the boxer, do you like getting up every morning at 4.30? And he said, no, but I love being the champion. Shaq O'Neal, every night for one hour from 7.30 to 8.30, he practices free throws. Larry Bird would shoot 500, the famous legendary basketball player. The people that you see succeeding, they have four or five routines that take them into their future. What you do consistently determines what you become permanently. Whether it's prayer, just in his presence. If you get up at 7 o'clock, 7 to 707, you go into his presence. I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. Seven minutes every morning, every morning. Your success will drive you crazy. There'll be so many things that God does in your life. Habit creates your future. Something you're doing daily. I got to tell you a little funny. When I was uh, 20 years old, I was in uh, South Louisiana, and there was about a 350-pound pastor I was preaching for. And I hadn't studied protocol and after the service, we're eating, and I said, Brother, how much you weigh? I said, how did you become so huge? I mean, he was huge. He looked like a baby elephant. I said, how did you get this huge? And he looked at me rather coldly and said back to me, he says, eating every night just like you're eating right now. <laughs> Something you're doing daily. There's three things you should do daily. Number one, the secret place. Number two, a plan. Write out ten things you will do that day. Link them to a, an hour. I never met a rich man who didn't put great value on his time. I, met a, I never met a poor man who cared about his time. I don't care how many times pastor tells you about the blessing of the Lord until you use time as currency until you use time as currency you'll never be blessed that's a gift from the lord make it valuable if you're going to be a millionaire it's 500 an hour your time is 500 an hour if you're going to be worth 10 million you're, it's ten thousand dollars an hour when my when my uh, income reached and my Reached 18 million a year, Pastor. I knew that was 9,000 an hour. There's 2,000 work hours in 50 weeks of the year, two weeks for vacation. 50 weeks times 40 is 2,000 hours. So if I want to think like a millionaire, that's 500 an hour. So when I got to the $9,000 an hour and somebody said, I want to have a cup of coffee with you. I had to look at them and say, is this worth a $9,000 cup of coffee? Start putting value on your time. When you come into the secret place, write down a list of what you need. Write down your plans. Say, God, this is what I want to accomplish. 
I mentioned that your assignment is any problem God has qualified you to solve. That when I walk into your, your house, I should see pictures on the wall. Your pictures on your wall at your house should be a conversation to me. They should talk to me about your future. The pictures in your home are talking about your past or your future. If you've got more pictures talking about yesterday than you talk about the future, you've missed something. Put in front of you what you want in you. Put in front of you what will inspire you. The second most important thing in your life is your assignment. To whom are you assigned? You're not assigned to everybody. I loved hearing our pastor said, I want to be your pastor. When you're assigned to somebody, their future matters. How do I know to whom I'm assigned? Whose pain concerns you? Whose tears concern you? Who do you want to protect? Whose enemies are you willing to confront? You're not assigned to everybody. You're assigned to somebody. And God has qualified you. That assignment's always geographical. And money is anywhere God wanted you to be. We can talk about that all day, can't we? Your finances are at a place. Money's not anywhere. It's where God wanted you to be. Provision is part of the confirmation you heard his voice. Your assignment must become your obsession. There are 14 seasons in your assignment. One of them is isolation. So God will school you to hear his voice. One of the seasons in your life is ferocious adversity. Because God uses your enemies to expose his endorsement of you. Hallelujah. When your enemy shows up, God shows out. And there's something very powerful about that. Your assignment should become your consuming desire. You should be able to tell me your assignment in one sentence. The Holy Spirit is the source of your life. Your assignment is the reason for your life. God saw a problem nobody could solve but you. Number three is the seed. Something you've been given to sow. Words are the seeds for feelings. Listening is the seed for knowledge. Knowledge is the seed for changes. I said yesterday that I'm a walking seed factory. Something I've been given can be traded for something else I've been promised. At a very critical time in my life, I received a royalty check for $8,500 went to preach for a close friend of mine, Rod Parsley, in Columbus, Ohio. And at the end of the service, the Holy Spirit said, how would you like to explore and experiment what... One man said, Brother Mike, I don't like Rolls Royces. I said, that's why it's at my house. I was preaching one night in Brazil, 5,000 pastors, and I said, God gave me a lifetime income for the rest of my life. I sowed one seed for $8,500, and God gave me a lifetime income. That's why the Wisdom Center doesn't pay me any money. Why? I've got to deal with God. I do business with God. And God said, tell the people if anybody wants to sow that seed. Pastor Silas Malafaya, remember his name. One of the top hundred men in Time Magazine in Brazil. Phenomenal man of God. He came crying to the platform. And he had an $8,500 check. He's crying. When I started praying for him, he fled off of that flat back on his back and I knelt down beside him God said tell him I'm going to give him a jet like I gave you that everything I do for you I'm going to do for him so I leaned down and I said Pastor Silas the Spirit of God told me that he's going to do for you with this 8500 what he did for me and the blessing of the Lord is going to sweep across your life God's going to give you a 
Jet, cash. He cried, bounced on the platform. God not only gave him a Gulf Stream jet. He, I'm fixing to fly with him. Yeah, you ever seen the Gulf Stream? You don't. Yes, G4, G5. Oh, you know about Gulf Streams. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah. I have a feeling about 10 men going to buy you one someday. Get ready for it. Get ready for it, because they will seal their business with God. He not only flew me all across Brazil. He'd be flying me. I'll be there two weeks from now. He'll be flying me. He's flown me all the way back to my house. And I said, you can't do this. That's too expensive. He said, you taught me two things. You taught me honor. And you taught me the seed. Something I've been given will create what I've been promised. I don't want to leave this service until I pray over your life. I didn't come to tell you about Jesus. You know about Jesus. I didn't come just to tell you about the Holy Spirit. He's all over this place. But I came to remind you that your covenant with God is intact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And nothing is impossible for those who will do business with God. Nothing. I want every man to stand to your feet. I guess there's nowhere else to stand but your feet, is it? <laughs> Had a real touch from the Lord yesterday about the men that was here yesterday. There was a, such a grace on this place. And I saw hunger. I saw thirst. I saw learning. I want every man standing right now, lift your right hand high, and just say these words, Holy Spirit, do business through me. Say it again, Holy Spirit. Do business through me. I receive a double portion of your wisdom. I receive a double portion of your anointing on my finances. Everything I touch will multiply. Do business through me. Everything I have came from you today I am a receiver of the supernatural what you did for Mike Murdoch I receive at my house and I will give a testimony I will tell everybody what you have done for me in the matchless name of Jesus I want every lady to stand beside your man men remain standing the role of a woman is a wealth manager. Say, I receive that role. Oh, that's the quietest I've ever heard women talk there. All women say it, I receive that role. I'm a firm believer that I am a wealth manager for my family. Now put up both hands high. All ladies, put up both hands high. God's given you something he didn't give men. Man's not made like a woman. And I haven't, had, I haven't met the man who can outwork a woman. There's a grace on you. There's an anointing on you. I want you as your hands uplifted, begin to say these words, Precious Father, I am a receiver of that anointing. Prosperity will work through me. Bless my home. Bless our business. And make me the number one inspiration for my husband. Open up doors that we thought were closed forever. In Jesus' name. There are 68 people in this room that I want to pray a very special prayer for that God will give you a lifetime income like he gave me. I was 68 a few days ago on the 18th of April. The next time remember that April the 18th, April the 18th. 
Everybody say April the 18th. I'll pray for you that day, Mike. Say, I'll pray for you that day, Mike. Stretch forth your hand toward me. What is 8,500 in Naira? This is not for everybody. This is for those who want to be catapulted to a level of prosperity unlike anything you've known. 1.5 million Naira? Boy, that sounds like a lot. One point, right at 1.5. That's close enough. Stretch forth your hand toward me. When I get through with this prayer, I'm going to pray for harvest for the 68 people. Now, we won't quit praying for the 68, but there's 68. I want God to take the anointing that's on my life and put it on you. And every time God blesses me, he blesses you. Every time God says something good for me, he does it for you. Not a penny goes in my pocket. This is for the house of God in this place. Stretch forth your hand. Father, if what I have said about the law of the seed, if what I have said, son, you got that song, I, God, you're so good. Lord, you're so good. You're so good to me. If what I have said about the law of the seed is just for Mike Murdoch's personal gain, may a curse be on me and my ministry for the rest of my life. May my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If what I have said about the law of the seed and the lifetime blessing that you put on my life. I ask you for 68 miracles. And let this 1.5 million Naira become a forever document with generational blessing in our family. I set myself in covenant with Isaiah 58 that our health shall spring forth speedily. I decree a debt-free home that becomes a testimony. Three, I decree and declare a sevenfold return of everything Satan has ever stolen from our house, our family, or our life. And number four, link us with a financial relationship. That ushers in rivers of favor and honor from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Let this seed be the seed for a lifetime income that no man, no woman can ever take from us because we've entered into a lifetime covenant with you. Your sheep know your voice. We do not argue with you. We do not negotiate with you. Father, just as you've given me 68 remarkable, remarkable years, I've shared this little testimony with our family here. I want those 68 never argue with a giver, never negotiate with the Holy Spirit. If you're one of the 68 to plant a 1.5 million dollar seed in the house of the Lord, God's going to turn your house into a house on the rock. You're going to see what God does. Quickly get out of your seat now and come stand right here close to the platform. Leave everybody. Leave everything around you. Quickly. We'll wait for it in the balcony. Quickly. Quickly. I've asked the Holy Spirit for 68 because it's linked to my 68 years. What God has done for me, he will do for you. Quickly come. Quickly come. Don't wait on anybody. When God talks to you about a seed, he has a harvest on his mind. Quickly come. Quickly come. Never negotiate with the Holy Spirit. 1.5 million naira is not enough to be a harvest. You can't buy a great house for that. You know that. You need a whole lot more than that. You need a whole lot more than that. Quickly come. Brother Mike, my dream is much bigger than $8,500. God sees my dream. 
Hallelujah. Somebody's going to have a, by, by December the 31st, someone here will have a business around the world. God's going to put you in links. The difference in people is who likes you. The difference in your success is who likes you. I just saw it in the spirit. Someone said something the other day, and I see it happening. We don't think you should tell people about all your blessings. And I said, now what's made you think I've told them all? Oh, someday I'll tell you. Someday I'll tell you. This is so huge. For 12 months, I want you to journal. For 12 months, I want you to journal. For 12 months, I want you to journal every surprise conversation. Every surprise the mantle that's sent by God to bring wealth into the kingdom of God so that the kingdom of God will never be frustrated to fulfill her dream. It's a great place to sow. It's a great place to sow. Praise God. Praise God. Say it loud, I receive. I receive. Say it again, I receive. Father, I thank you for this incredible day in your presence. You are the God who's our source. Yes, you are. Lord, I've never understood this incredible blessing, the anointing, the mantle, but I value it knowing that the body of Christ will multiply. There will be multiplication. You kill anything that doesn't grow. Anything that doesn't multiply, you despise. So we welcome this covenant today. We enter into this covenant. Father, some that are sowing today are sowing extra seed out of their own business. Some are sowing extra seed for their family. I decree in 30 days that the greatest testimony of our lifetime comes and explodes in this house. We will remember this day as the turning point day. And everything you do for me, do for them. Everything you do for me, do for them. Brother, I decree that the house of our pastor will come and appear in such miraculous outpouring. So miraculous outpouring that he will remember this day you saw him enter into that covenant. It is done. It is done. Say, I receive. Pastor, I haven't, I haven't told you this. But my house got paid for miraculously when a man of God told me to plant a seed equal to my monthly payment. And in eight months, God paid off my house. Somebody in this place wants a debt-free house. And somebody's going to be walking up to you saying, Pastor, this is my monthly payment on my house. God told me to sow it into you for your house because he's going to give me a debt-free house. Don't ever be slow to receive that. I receive it. Oh, don't ever be slow to receive it. It's, it's miraculous. It's miraculous. Eight months, and I have it on all kind of newspapers. Publish, you can take pictures, fly over my house, take pictures. We have a Jehovah Jireh. How Dr. Murdoch, in Nigeria, we, we don't do monthly payments. Nigerians tend to do everything outright. They do 12 months in advance, kind of thing? Um, no, we don't do mortgages here because interest rates are very high. They're like about 22 to 28%, so it's, it's supernatural faith that gets people into their own property. And that, that's what I believe God has, has relieved. That's how this, there are a few mortgage products in the banks now that help you to get a mortgage that will last about five years and you pay. Um, Angela, would you come quickly and explain to me where are you, Angela? Okay. Either, Angela. Um, we have mortgage products in the market that um, do up to 10 years, but you have to contribute close to about 30 or 50 percent of the principal amount. So you have to bring your equity of about 50 percent, 30 percent or 50 percent. So you don't get a mortgage product like you have offshore where you can get um, just contribute about 5 percent or even 1 percent. 
So in, in essence, it's cheaper for you to actually get the house with all your funds rather than actually borrowing. Because the, the interest burden will be so much that in five years you pay two or three or four or five times the amount of the house. So it's really what we do here, you will save up and then you just purchase a house. That's what happens. I'm good at that kind of stuff. I'm good at that. That's faith. That's where faith. Is there anyone that would love to have supernatural faith to buy a house cash? Okay. Okay. Wow. Let me just tell you briefly how the Lord works in my life. I don't buy houses on credit. I don't borrow money. Um, God's blessed me and blessed me and blessed me. I bought, I bought, uh, I bought me homes cash. I bought seven, three hundred thousand dollar homes cash a few days ago, seven in a week. Wasn't planning on it, it's just my relatives came in and my daddy liked the house, my sister liked the house. There's an anointing on my life for that. And pastor, I, I, this sounds like your little braggy kind of thing, but, but see, I wasn't raised with any kind of wealth, with at any level. But to sit there and and drop these stacks of money and we'll just say we've never had houses bought by cash. And they're stacked up in the bank. That grace came in me because I believe the same anointing that works through my life can work through your life. I said it'll work through your life. I really mean that. I really mean that. There's going to be supernatural. Father, do for every person standing here in obedience. Receive every seed of obedience as a seed for a debt-free home. Let there be such a miraculous river flow through this house that people will be stunned at what you do for their life. We don't need to know how. We just need to know who. And you are our source. Father, this is why you've given this to me to bring into the body of Christ. Thank you, Father. You've been so good. And I know the quietness has not been jealousy. There's just been strong consideration. Could it happen to me? Yes, you are our God. You are our God. I ask you for 68 homes, debt-free, by December the 31st, 2014. I ask you to make this a turning point in this house. And from now on, people will remember the God, Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel 1.5 millionaire. And you're hesitating. I feel that God says don't hesitate because I don't want to hesitate in releasing to you exceedingly abundantly above what you are asking and thinking of as your dream house. God wants to do that for you. Please don't hesitate. Whoever you are, and I see a man. I see a man. I would almost tell you what color your shirt is. I see a man standing. Father, when you talk to us about a seed, you've got a harvest on your mind. When you talk to us about a seed, you've got a harvest on your mind. There's a man in this house today, and God has already spoken to you, Pastor, and you know it by the Holy Ghost. I don't know how much a hundred thousand dollars is in this house, in this nation, but I know that every person who comes and places this seed in our leader's hand, whether it's the hundred, the one point five million dollar. I feel like we should place it right here at his feet. If there are ways, can we use this? Good, wonderful. I want us to come and say, while we're standing there, I want you to place that right in this offering basket. Not a penny is for me, not a cent goes in his pocket. This is for the house of the Lord. How many believe God will honor this seed supernaturally? Who has been wanting a debt-free house real bad? Have you been? Why don't you just wave a hand to God? There's, a, there's an anointing on my life. 
I buy my sisters. I have four sisters. I buy them houses. Why? God has blessed me. How many like to be the Joseph at your house? Hallelujah. Say it aloud. I will be the Joseph in my house. Praise God. Pastor, would you release us? Father, as this seed leaves the now, we release it into the near future to gather abundance of witty innovations, cash flow releases, the breaking of bars of iron, the cutting asunder of gates of brass, the releasing of treasure hidden, not from them but for them, to come mightily through contracts, opportunities, open doors, supernatural gratuities, gifts, dividends, returns, inheritances, and far more. And that Father, He will expedite by the working of the host of heaven supernatural sequential miracles to begin and sustain the avalanche of financial breakthroughs that will not only last a lifetime but will perpetuate to generations not yet born in the family lineage of these sons and your daughters. Thank you for completing that which was lacking in our faith by sending the apostle of wisdom to come with a word on wealth that we may never lack that which is necessary to fulfill your will on earth, even these things that concern our cash flow, our currency. Now honor the word of your servant. Confirm the word he has spoken with signs, wonders, and miracles immediately following in the name that and do the bidding of your word as it concerns this house, that what you were hoping for when you called us, we might easily do as you put wealth in their hands to answer all things. So let it be in Jesus' name. God bless you as you release your seed and may God now release your harvest. In Jesus' name. And if you're not able to redeem it today, please just write your pledge and put the pledge evidencing your determination in the basket. If you're making out checks, make them to House on the Rock. And I do assure you, that money is not coming to me. It's not going to Dr. Murdoch. It's going to the projects and purposes of this house. In a few moments... So do a wire transfer. The information is on the screen in a few moments. If you'd like to electronically transfer your seed to the Lord, that will happen. Um, if you are also ready to redeem your tithes and offerings this morning, uh, kindly lift up a hand and Usher will get to you as soon as the aisles clear so that we can wrap all this up.